They propelled me down industrial hallways, into the depths of whatever building I was in. Somewhere in Oakland, I thought. We lingered outside a holding cell for a moment, while waiting on a steel door to a connecting corridor. The holding cell was visible through its cracked wire grid window, a crowded concrete box with a metal bench around its perimeter and a toilet in its corner. The ambient odor reminded me of the hockey arena change rooms of my youth. Its dozen inhabitants looked grim and listless, except for an obese bald white man who gazed at me thoughtfully, as if he knew me, and a heavily tattooed young Asian man grinning with a mouthful of metal teeth. I looked away. The steel door buzzed open. I was led down another narrow concrete hall to a tiny windowless cell, furnished with a steel bunk bed, thin mattresses, threadbare sheets, a steel sink, and a lidless steel toilet. I expected a cellmate, but the door closed on me alone. They left me a plastic meal tray, adorned with a limp ham and cheese sandwich, a bag of M&Ms, and a paper cup of orange juice. When I saw the food, I realized I was famished. After I ate, I wanted to think, to try to remember if Amara had behaved strangely in recent days, if she'd been hiding something from me, but it was hard to think. My brain and body had both apparently had enough. Suddenly woozy, I sat, then lay on the lower bunk. It had already been by some distance the longest day of my life. Amara had never hidden anything from me, as far as I could remember. Well, no. Now that I thought about it, that wasn't entirely true. There was the box. That strange, never explained box in our basement closet. I tried to imagine some way that might somehow be connected to what was happening, but I couldn't think. I wasn't just woozy. Something else was happening. My vision swam. A kind of static began to roar in my ears. I felt too weak to stand or even sit. My muscles seemed impossibly distant, slipped from the bounds of my mind's control. It felt like those mornings in my teens, when I would wake up paralyzed for long minutes, unable to command my own body. The hag, Newfoundlanders called it, an evil witch sitting on your chest. As I lay there, paralyzed, the overhead light went out. Sometime later, my cell door opened. A dim radiance, emergency lighting shone from the hall. I couldn't even focus my eyes on the sizable shadowy figure who entered. The whole bed shifted when he sat beside me, the big bald man from the holding cell.